Hello, good day everybody. I uh, trust that you are doing really well. I want to share with you a little bit about uncertainty. I was reading something the other day that spoke about the effects that uncertainty can have on us. And I know we all know that we're living in times with high levels of uncertainty. And evidently what happens when you face uncertainty is it can cause the prefrontal cortex of your brain to actually begin to shut down, which impairs your ability to solve problems, pay attention and stay flexible. Uh, this increases your chances of engaging with, uh, 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 with problems and things with irrational behavior and makes you prone to more, ang more prone to anxiety, depression and stress. And uh, it's for that reason that it is so important that we learn to, what to do in times of uncertainty. And one of the th key things to do is that we know how to be silent and still before the Lord. To come to a place where we can find Him and meet Him in, this, in the presence of our uncertainty. To fix our mind on Him and center our hearts on, on His truth and who He is and begin to draw strength from that. Uh, stillness and being still is something that we don't uh, find so natural to do, many of us. Um, but it is such an important discipline in, in finding a way to find strength and stability in uncertainty. So how do you practice being still? What can you do uh, in order to be still? I think first of all, when we come to the Lord with in quietness and stillness, we have to acknowledge our limitations, to acknowledge that we can't handle everything, that we don't have the answers for everything, that there are certain things that we are uncertain about and to acknowledge our humanity, to acknowledge the feelings that it gives us, the concerns that it causes us, um, it's very good for us. It, it, um, it's okay to give ourselves permission to, that we feel certain ways and um, helps us to process what those feelings are and to perhaps break the cycle of these intrusive and anxious thoughts that we may have um, and helps our brain to begin to re-engage and, and begin to think again about what we can do and how we can deal with the situation. The second thing is to lay down our expectations, to, to be aware of what's causing us to that far, currently feels anxious or afraid and to adapt and to change and to, th and to think, okay, well, perhaps our expectations aren't going to be met, but what can we still expect? What can we still work towards? What can we still do and, and, and get the best outcome that we have? Um, it, it, it's helpful to take those expectations and to just surrender them before the Lord, to put them down before the Lord. You can even imagine yourself putting your expectations just before the Lord and at the foot of the cross and say, Lord, here are my expectations. I give them to you. And then to, to consider the promises of the Lord. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, the Lord promises us something. We develop an expectation. And then that expectation is not met. doesn't mean the promise of the Lord is not for, going to be fulfilled. It may just be fulfilled in a different way. So remind the Lord of his promises. Take those promises before the Lord and ask him for the correct expectations to have. And then the third thing is to, to uh, pick up God's declarations. That declare those promises that the Lord has made. De declare the promises of His Word. Speak those out. Remind yourself. That allows your mind the space to re-engage with possibilities, with hope, with what can be done. Um, and to not go into a state of shutting down, but to look for the, the, that which can still be achieved and that which is still possible. Um, Put on the promises of the Lord, engage in the promises of the Lord and stir your faith with the promises of the Lord. And in that way, we can uh, go through times of uncertainty. And, and, I, and I'm reminded of what is so beautiful in uh, Philippians 4 verse 7, isn't it? Where that amazing scripture uh, says to us that, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The peace of God that surpasses understanding, that is beyond what our minds can reason. So when our minds are struggling and even shutting down because of uncertainty, there's a peace of God, a stillness, a rest in God that we can achieve, that can get our minds re-engaged, and that will then guard our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus, that will keep us moving forward and going forward. I want to trust the Lord with you that even with high uncertainty that you would be able to find the stillness with the Lord so that he can 
show you the possibilities that are available in him and that we can continue to move forward. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you for your presence right now. And in this moment even, we come before you. And Lord, we come before you in stillness. We recognize our limitations. We recognize that there are so much that is out of our control. And then we, Lord, we put our expectations before you. And we say, Lord, perhaps our expectations have been incorrect. Or, or even if they were, we recognize that they may not come to pass in the way that we thought and hoped. But that doesn't mean we give up on all expectation. And that's why we come to your promises. And we thank you for your promises. Remind us of your promises. And we speak your promises over our situation. And, and, and we, we call upon your promises, Lord. And we look for that which is possible and the hope that we have in you. And thank you, Lord, that in that, that you would guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus through the peace that is beyond what our mind can fathom and understand that you can give us. And we thank you for that today in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Have a wonderful week.